What is going on guys? This is Mia Sin and uh, I'm not even gonna lie to you guys, I had trouble sleeping yesterday because I was too busy figuring out some new combos for Gaming Puppet. The new support is beyond insane to the point where I think I can safely say it might be the next tier 0 deck and I know I, I've said this a few times in the past and I was wrong. This deck is actually terrifying because it's more consistent than pure Snake Eyes. And it can play literally the exact same amount of non-engine cards. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm playing billions of hand traps, as well as some other good cards going second. So it's, it's kind of scary, and uh, in a world where people hand trap you incorrectly, you can easily benefit off of that, and you can also kind of break boards going second. You can do a lot more than people think. I think this deck gets a bad rep because it's especially played by casual players, uh, fans of the anime. I mean, I'm a fan of Gimmick Puppet myself. It's in my top five favorite decks, which is the reason why I spend so long uh, figuring out combos on this deck. I slept at 6 a.m. yesterday, or rather, should I say today. And even today, I kept figuring out combos until this very moment where I decided to film this video because... I was way too excited. I felt like I had to share everything that I figured out with you guys. But yeah, this is this is a great day for me, and hopefully it's gonna be a great day for you as well. Once I show you these five combos as well as deck profile. But also before we go any further, I would really appreciate if you could smash the like and subscribe button. This time even more important than usual because if we can get 1,000 likes on this video, I will be doing the exact same thing as I've done in my Raid Raptor video. So I'll be going. Uh, very, very in-depth, and I will be making a full combo spreadsheet for you guys, maybe 10 plus combos, where I show every single possible combo featuring every single hand trap. You really don't want to miss it, so make sure you smash the like and subscribe button. This is going to be the next deck that you will probably play at a, at a big event when it gets released, and it is legal for any WCQ, so keep that into consideration. It's an Infinite Forbidden, which is July 19, if I recall correctly. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's get right into it. Alright, so first things first, uh, everybody knows that uh, the deck has one card FTKs, but this deck is not just a gimmick for FTKs. Yes, I know this was done on purpose. Uh, it can do more than just FTK, and it doesn't always necessarily need the field spell to FTK. Keep that in mind, right? Because the field spell is kind of like a, a cheat card. The card is insane. It is the best card I've ever read probably in my life. Uh, on activation, it searches any gimmick puppet monster from your deck to your hand. That's already good. And then all of your gimmick puppet monsters are undestructible by battle and unaffected by your opponent's activated non-exceed monster effects. So, uh, Valor, Mourner, how about no? So, a one-card FTK can still work through Valor and Mourner. And then, uh, you can also detach an Xyz monster from a monster that you control to revive back a gimmick puppet monster in your graveyard to your opponent's field, which is very relevant. So, all three effects are insanity. This, this card is custom-made. It was a gimmick puppet fan who designed this card. I would have loved to say that it was me. Anyways, you're going to be searching the Little Soldiers with this card. This card was actually teased on the artwork of Grinder, uh, Grinder Golem, Giant Grinder. Now you normal summon Little Soldiers and you foolish the Bloody Doll for cost in order to make it level 8. So again, even if you get uh, Impermed, uh, you are still going to be resolving it to send the Bloody Doll. So that's actually really cool. And then that's going to be reviving, uh, recycling itself back and then you're going to be revealing the rank 8, so special summon uh, itself as well as the Cattle Scream. You are locked under Gimmick Puppet Monsters only. So don't go thinking that you can splash some cool little engines like Horus or uh, Theron King Regulus. You can't do any of that, unfortunately. But it's all good in the hood. Pure gimmick puppet is where it's at. So yeah, now you're going to be overlaying these two monsters in order to make the Fantasix Machina. Uh, you can detach a material to search a rack of magic sub spell card from, from your deck to your hand. And also during your main phase this turn, you can uh, normal summon one extra machine monster in addition to your normal summoner set. Uh, so that's actually really nice in this deck. And then if you special summon a gimmick puppet Xyz monster, you can revive itself uh, back from the your field, either, uh, well, from the grave, either to your field or your opponent's field, and then you recycle back your wreck of magic from a spell, uh, spell card from your grave at your hand. So literally every single effect about this card is insane as well. Anyways, you're going to be searching the Argent Chaos Force, which is like the, the, the best rank up that you can play in this deck because it has a dual utility. And you're going to be evolving this Machina into the Dark Strings just because it has a lot of attacks, so... Might as well. It doesn't really do anything at the moment. This one, at least not this one. But yeah, now you detach very specifically the Makina to revive back the Cattle Scream. And now you're going, going to be overlaying for the Puppet of Strings. And since you summoned the E-Rank 5 or High Rixies, you can recycle back the Argent Chaos Force. So again, the fact that it was this rank of magic does matter. And you're going to be detaching a material off of Puppet of Strings in order to place a string counter on each monster on the field except this one. This is going to be uh, important because when you're going to be evolving the Puppet of Strings into Dark Strings, 
you're going to be destroying it with its effect every single monster on the field with string counters, and then you draw one card and inflict damage to your opponent equal to the monster with the highest attack that was destroyed. So in this case, 3300 attack. It's kind of like the Gandora X Dragon of Destruction. So yeah, the Puppet of Strings, uh, sorry, Dark Strings dies. And also in Shieling 2, the Machina is going to be reviving itself back on your field and then rec uh, recycling back the Argent Chaos Force. Uh, so yeah, now you're going to be overlaying, uh, sorry, evolving your Machina into the other Machina, so Fanatics. And that is going to be using its effect in order to search the Puppet uh, ser Service Puppet uh, from your deck to your hand. But this is not really relevant if you're going for the FTK. It's really just a backup plan when the FTK doesn't work because... No, you can't always FTK, but like I said, this is not just a gimmick that only FTKs and does nothing else. Anyways, uh, now you use the other effect in order to revive back the Dark Strings to your opponent's field, which again is relevant, you, um, you get advantage off of that. And you're going to be using the effect in order to destroy it, and then burn your opponent for 1650. And then the effect of Mention of the Underworld Dolls, the field spell, detach one material from your Xyz, and then revive back yet again another gimmick puppet monster in your opponent's field. So the Dark Strings again. And at this point, we can uh, go uh, link off into the Chimera Doll. This card is uh, somewhat popular because it was played in Super Heavy Samurai. Uh, with Albion the Sanctifier Dragon, yes, I know, huh? Every, every, it's, rid it's ridiculous, like, how the only Gimmick Puppet monsters that are known are this one and Gimmick Puppet Nightmare. Gimmick Puppet Nightmare is unplayable in Gimmick Puppet, by the way. It's not a real Gimmick Puppet card, the card actually sucks. Anyways, uh, Chimera Doll allows you to search your deck, either, either search or foolish for a Gimmick Puppet monster, and then if the only monsters that you control are Gimmick Puppet monsters, uh, at least one, you're always gonna have one because of Chimera Doll, you can technically special summon a Gimmick Puppet monster from your hand, but we're not gonna be doing that because we want to normal summon the Terror Baby because it has a monster reborn effect only on normal summon, not on normal or special, so keep that in mind. So yeah, you want to normal summon it and then revive back the Bloody Doll, and this is level 4, but we want to make it level 8, and a good thing that we can do is use the Graveyard Effect of Little Soldiers, banish it so that we can increase its level by 8, uh, this can target up to two gimmick puppet monsters you control. So even if we add double level four, then we can tr transform them both into dub double level eight. And then we can overlay for giant grinder. And up to twice per turn during your main phase one, you can detach a material and then destroy a special summon monster upon control. And if it was an Xyz, you burn your opponent equal to its original attack. And since our opponent controls the dark strings that we were able to give him, with the mansion of the underworld dolls, we can destroy it, burn for 33, and that is going to be game over. So one card is all we need. So it FTKs the opponent, draws one card, and searches the service puppet. So even if our opponent manages to survive somehow, we still have a card that can steal monsters or upon control, equal to the number of gimmick puppet exceeds monsters, and we still have five other cards in our hand with a decent follow-up. So that's already pretty nice. Let's get into combo number two. Alrighty, so combo number two, my hand has little soldiers as well as triple tactic thrust. Very interesting because my opponent does not have any hand shops. And this thrust is going to be playable. So yeah, normal summon the little soldiers and then foolish the bloody doll. We do not have the field spell. So we are going to be lacking the monster reborn effect of the underworld dolls for uh, the final burn. So in other words, this card, little soldiers alone is not FTK. But it, it, it gets you very close to the FTK. And if you don't want FTK, then you can still put up a really nice board. But yeah, now we're going to be going into the cattle stream again. Makina, detach in order to surge the rank of magic Argent Chaos Force. And then evolve into the Dark Strings. Again, the very start of the combo is the exact same. Detach and then revive back the Cattle Scream. Puppet of Strings. Recycle back. And then uh, place a uh, String Counter on it. And then summon Dark Strings number 2. And then Chilling Quan Chilling 2. So summon the Machina on your field. And then destroy the Dark Strings. Burn your opponent for 33. And then evolve into the uh, fan Fanatics Machina. Search for your Puppet Trap card. And then detach, revive back the Dark Strings to your opponent. And this is where it gets nasty. Because this card has a mandatory effect on summon to destroy every monsters on the field with string counters. But there is no monsters on the field with string counters, so nothing is going to die off of the dark strings. But our opponent still used a monster effect. It's pretty much the same thing as Gen and Ken. So now that we can thrust, we can search our deck for terraforming. And terraforming is scary here because that means that we get access to the field spell. And the field spell means that we have access to the third effect which is the really scary one here. The fact that we can revive back a Gimmick Puppet, excuse me, uh, gimmick puppet monster on our opponent's field, which is, again, terrifying here. So now we get a normal summon for the Terror Baby and then revive back, and then the Chimera Doll can also search, so we're getting a lot of searches, and we're going to be going for the Dreary Doll, and then uh, overlay for the Puppet of Strings, and then detach in order to revive back the Dark Strings to our opponent, and then our opponent has two Xyz monsters, a 3300 attack. This is looking very juicy. So we can go Little Soldiers, increase the level of Terror Baby by 4, so it's level 8. 
And then Dreary Doll revive itself back. And I think you can see where this is going. Grinder go Giant Grinder. I mean, I'm feeling like Lithium right now. Grinder Golem. Yeah, uh, destroy and then burn for 33. And then do it again because it's up to twice per turn. Congratulations, you are dead. I didn't even have to draw the field spell for that. I drew Thrust and it's good enough. All right, so if you don't draw the field spell or if you do not draw Thrust, can you still FTK? Uh, can you still FTK? And the answer is yes, as long as you have combo as well as two extenders. Uh, two level 8 extenders. Uh, it's still gonna work, but Machine Dupe is the, the only one that I could really think of that is just one single card. The other ones are always like three card combos. I wanted to show some two card combos just so that it looked physically better, but I don't necessarily recommend playing Machine Dupe in this deck because some of the best cards are not really Machine Dupe targets and you don't really want to play more than one because they are admittedly bricks, unfortunately. It, it is sad to say. But yeah, Little Soldiers, again, sorry, Foolish, the Bloody Doll, and then Recycle Back, again, uh, Reveal the Machina X, and then Special Summon the Cattle, uh, Overlay for the Machina, yeah, it's, it's always the same thing, the very start, Argent Chaos Force into Dark Strings, and this is where it gets very interesting, so... Uh, revive back, and then you're going uh, into Machine Dupe now, so target the Bloody Doll, summon two more from the deck, and then overlay for Puppet of Strings, and you're going to be recycling back the Rank of Magic Argent Kells Force. The order here is actually very important. So yeah, now you place a String Counter on everything, but you don't go into the Dark Strings yet, because otherwise you're going to be destroying your own Bloody Dolls, and that's not what you bloody want. So now you're going to be going overlay into Giant Grinder, and then into the uh, Dark Strings, so that you don't destroy anything for no reason. And this time, you're going to be summoning the Machina on your opponent's field. Very important. And you still recycle back the Argent Chaos Force. You have to do it in this order. The spell, spell card graveyard effect first. And then the Machina. The other way around does not work, unfortunately. Giant Grinder destroy and then burn your opponent for 15. Now our opponent has 32. We only have to deal one final uh, hit with a Giant Grinder. It's not too hard. So we're going to be evolving into the Fanatics Machina. And then search for the Puppet Shop card again. It's not really relevant. Uh, over, uh, sorry, revive back the Dark Strings to our opponent's field. And this is, this is where it gets uh, very nice as well. So Chimera Doll, Search, the Terror Baby. And then Normal Summon off of the uh, Rank 8 Xyz Monster. And then Revive Back. Uh, little Soldiers, Increase the Level by 4. Go for the second Giant Grinder. And then Bird for Game. And just like that, our opponent is dead without the need for the Field Spell whatsoever. Alrighty, so what can you do with one single card that isn't the Field Spell and you have nothing else? You just are trying to make a board because, like I said... This deck isn't just a gimmicky FTK deck. It does a little more than that. And if you know how to play this deck correctly, it should really get you there, honestly. It's it's just, it's really nice and it's really consistent consistent as well. So many one-card starters. I'm a huge fan. Anyways, Normal Summon the Little Soldiers and then Foolish the Bloody Doll for cost. I love this mechanic so much. Konami, I love you so much. But yeah, uh, anyways, Recycle Back and then Reveal and then Special Summon again. But it's going to be a little different than last time because, again, we're not going to be going for the FTK since we're, we can't anyways. So Argent Chaos Force evolve into the Dark Strings. Um, even though the very start of the combo is still kind of the same, it's going to be different uh, at one point. But yeah, Puppet of Strings, uh, place a counter. And then Argent Chaos Force evolve into Dark Strings, Chilling Quan, Chilling 2, Machina. Revive back and then burn your opponent for 33 and draw one card. This is also relevant. In case we draw something sp like disgusting like Mourner, look at what you can do. I think it's actually really unfair. So now uh, overlay for the Fanatics Machina, search for the Chap card. And then revive back the Dark Strings to your opponent, uh, and then you can destroy it and then burn your opponent for half the attack of the monster that was summoned. So now we can burn our opponent for 1650, and our opponent has 3050 uh, uh, life points left. Uh, so we can put our opponent in a really bad position, and we can set that trap card and pass turn there. If our opponent summons a monster with over 2000 attack, the game ends on the spot. Look at that, okay? So our opponent is going to be summoning the Fenrir, and then we're going to be going Chainlink 1 Fanatics Machina to destroy the Fenrir, and then your burner our opponent for half the attack. And then Chainlink 2 goes to Mourner, so that if it leaves the field, our opponent takes the full damage, and just like that, 24, 1200, Merry Christmas, you're dead. This is insane, like, the fact that Mourner can help your FTK, everything can help the FTK is insane! You don't always have to rely on the field spell, it's... I love this deck so freaking much, it makes no sense. I keep discovering new techs every single time. 
Hand shops help you going second as well, but now even going first, this is just beautiful to look at. Alrighty, so what happens if we don't have the field spell and we just have a bunch of cards that look a little redundant? I mean, we've got Foolish Burial, the card says, send one monster from your deck to the graveyard. And then we got Condolence Puppet, which is, send gimmick puppet monsters uh, with, mo with different names from the deck to the graveyard, up to the number of monsters that your opponent controls that were special summoned from the extra deck, plus one. So in other words, zero plus one, so it's a Foolish Burial. We got two Foolish Burials, our opponent has Ash and Nibiru, what can we do? The answer is everything. We're in business, boys. It doesn't matter. So yeah, first play is Condolence Puppet. We can kind of bait the Ash, not that it matters. Uh, let's say our opponent doesn't Ash us, then we can uh, Foolish the uh, Bloody Doll. And then Bloody Doll is going to be recycling it itself. But we don't You want to use the effect of Bloody Doll in the hand, because then if we get Ashed, we lose the game. We can't do anything. This Foolish Burial is not going to be doing anything. So now we want to go Foolish Burial, send the Terror Baby, and this card has the most convenient graveyard effect ever. You can banish it, and then your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to the activation of your Gimmick Puppet Monster's effects this turn. Konami thought about everything. So now when we go uh, Extra Sister Martha effect, our opponent has to let everything go. This is so freaking sick. So <laughs> now we can Special Summon it uh, alongside a monster from the deck, and that's going to be the Dreary Doll for next turn. Uh, for, for next turn. And then we can overlay for the Makina, and then search our deck for the uh, Argent Chaos Force. Count the amount of summons, so that's uh, three. And summon number four is going to be the uh, Makina, and then that's going to be searching for the trap card. And for the first time, since we're not actually FTKing, this trap card matters. The fact that it actually does something. And before we end our turn, we're going to be using the Graveyard Effect of Condolence Puppet, so we can banish it and then target one XC's uh, machine monster uh, we control. It cannot be destroyed by our opponent's card effects while face up on the field. That is permanent. It's not until the end of the turn. So even on our opponent's turn, this monster is still undestructible by card effects. That is kind of nasty. And then the service puppet allows us to target monsters our opponent controls up to the number of gimmick puppet exceeds monsters you control. Take control of them until the end phase. And it also has a graveyard effect. If you control a gimmick puppet exceeds monster, we can banish it. Except the turn it was sent to the grave. And then revive back an exceeds monster in either player's graveyard on either player's field in defense position. Everything about this card is fantastic. It's, it's also good for a follow play, but we have a guaranteed follow up play in the form of Bloody Doll when it becomes a. When it gets detached, it's going to be recycling itself back to the hand, and then we can use the effect in the hand again and just keep playing the game. And then the next time we summon an Xyz monster, Argent Chaos Force comes back, and also the Makina comes back, and then recycles back the Argent Chaos Force again. So again, you can see where this is going, and we got the Dreary Doll. We've got a follow up for days off of one single card and two interruptions. And Nibiru does nothing, and the Ash also does nothing if you got one single card to ensure that the Bloody Doll in a hand effect can resolve. So yeah, now we just pass turn, and we're going to be winning the game because our opponent can summon the Fenrir, and we can just go, nah, destroy that. And you take 1200, and what a coincidence, time has been called. Yeah, you can imagine just how unfair this deck is in time. You are never losing because it's a burn deck, so, you know, you can d deal damage during any phase. It doesn't matter. Anyways, that's it for the combos. Absolutely beautiful stuff, right? Let's get into the deck profile now, which might be even more beautiful. Alrighty, guys, so this is my deck profile. I, I'm not gonna brag or anything. I genuinely believe this is the best deck profile you can find on YouTube. Like, straight up, this is the only deck profile that is actually realistic to play in an actual YCS setting. I mean, we're playing 15 hand shops, 3 Nibiru, 3 Ash, 3 Mourner, 3 Valor, 3 Imperium. So even for the fire decks at the moment, you can actually battle them with this uh, with this deck list. We've got so many ways to stop them. The odds of drawing a hand shop are like 90% or something. But what really gets me here, what, the reason why I'm really making a video on this deck and the reason why I'm really hyping it up and why I think it's actually tier 0 is because it's more consistent than Snake Eyes because it has 16 one card starters in a 40 card deck list. We've got three Condolence Puppet, that's a Foolish Burial, it gets you to Bloody Doll. And then we got the, the four cheat cards, the, 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 the one card FTKs. I mean, these ones are just way too good. You got like a 42% chance to draw any of these cards. And if you do, the game ends. Literally, it just ends. And then we got three Little Soldiers, also a one card um, combo, but it's not a one card FTK. Uh, double Scissor Arms, it's a, it's a worse version of Little Soldiers, so two copies should be enough. 
And we also got Foolish Burial, which is another copy of Condolence Puppet. It's not redundant like this, because if you draw both Condolence Puppet and Foolish Burial, you can use both and then Foolish 2 cards. So the Terror Baby as well as the Bloody Doll, and then you banish the Terror Baby in order to make sure that the Bloody Doll resolves through an Ash, or rather around an Ash, the Ash would not be able to be used for anything. Uh, but yeah, 16 one card starters, that's a really big deal. Uh, Condolence Puppet, that's a three of. It's really good going second as well, because it's kind of like a Shuttle Fusion. You can just send a bunch of monsters from the, the deck to the graveyard. So we can start sending the Biz doll as well as the Terra Baby uh, so that our opponent cannot respond to anything. And the Biz doll makes it so that our gimmick puppet monsters are untargetable by card effects this turn. So even if you don't have the field spell, you're fine. Yeah, you can break massive boards going second with this card. It's, it's really nice and it's a must at three. Uh, I'm not going to explain why you need the four field spells. That's a given. And then the Bloody Doll, that's also a given. It's Exorcist or Martha. We're absolutely trying to play this card. It's, I mean, also comparable to Mathmex Circular. And what did uh, what did these cards uh, teach us about Yu-Gi-Oh? That anything that triggers in the hand to special summon itself and a monster from the deck is usually absolutely destined for success. And this card is no exception. Little Soldier is foolish as for cost. So again, very comparable to Mathmex Circular. Better than Armageddon Knight. This is Armageddon Knight, though. Its effect on normal summon is to send a gimmick puppet monster from deck to grave, so it's strictly objectively worse than Little Soldiers. Little Soldiers also has a graveyard effect, so everything about this card is much better than Scissor Arms, but you still want Scissor Arms because you still want to have some more ways of getting some gimmick puppet monsters in the graveyard, particularly Cattle Scream if Bloody Doll can't summon it, or the Dreary Doll, which is, yet again, another one of those cards with a really nice graveyard effect. But yeah, so these 16 one-card starters are just always nice to open. And then these six cards that are not necessarily great, they're combo pieces. You can draw them and it's still fine. But there's one of them that is kind of like a Garnet and it's Argent Chaos Force. Uh, the reason why it's a Garnet and not really a Tachetumborg is because if you draw it, you can't use the effect of the Fantasix Machina in order to search it. Which means that you don't get the extra normal summon for machine. Sometimes it's fine, it can be tolerated, but sometimes it's it just hurts a lot, unfortunately. Uh, there are some still there are still some combos that it can FTK if you even if you draw Argent Chaos Force, but you're gonna be relying on more than one card. It's it might be a two card combo, maybe a three card combo if you're super unlucky, but I doubt it. I, I think two card combo should still get you to the FTK. Uh, but yeah, uh, everything else, I mean, you just need at least as a one of. You don't need any other gimmick puppet monsters, honestly, and I don't recommend playing Machine Dupe, it's just a brick. I have credibility when I say that because I played Cyber Dragons for 15 years, and, I mean, over 15 years at this point, and Machine Dupe was always, like, the worst card for me because it was just to win more. If my hand was bad, Machine Dupe was the reason why my hand was even worse, uh, because I would have, like, Machine Dupe with no targets, or uh, it was just, like, really bad, or I would have, like, multiple Cyber Dragons with multiple Machine Dupes. Uh, and this deck is, you don't really need it. You just need good extenders and you need good deck building. That's pretty much it. Uh, so yeah, these six bricks in a way. Uh, so Callous Cream, Dreary Doll, Terror Baby, uh, Biz Doll, Argent Kells Force, and Service Puppet. If you want to, you can side the puppet instead. Uh, that's also nice. Then you would have one less brick, but also uh, less explosiveness going first in case you can't FTK, but you still have combo. Uh, so that's also something that can be or should be taken into consideration. And then for the other non-engine cards, one talent as well as double thrust, I showcase the application of thrust in this deck, really nice. And talent is also fantastic. So yeah, 40 card deck list, no more is needed. This is the perfect number. For the extra deck, you can't really summon non-gimmick puppet monsters, so there's no reason to play like Zeus, Typhon, SP Little Knight, you can't really ever summon these cards, honestly. Uh, so double Fanatics Machina, it's the evolution of Fantasix Machina. Uh, so two of each of these. And then two Dark Strings, a triple puppet of strings, even though I think two should probably be enough as well. One Giant Hunter, uh, I mean, by, by the way, the reason why I'm playing more Puppet of Strings than Dark Strings is because in the grind game, you can summon Puppet of Strings and then put a, a string counter on everything. And then if you have a way to summon back the Dark Strings, maybe with a graveyard effect of a service puppet, or when you revive back with the Terror Baby, then you can destroy a bunch of monsters or more controls and draw one card and also burn for damage. Uh, so it's easier to summon the Dark Strings uh, than to XC summon the Puppet of Strings, because this is on Special Summon, not on XC Summon, whereas this, you kind of have to have it uh, XC Summon because you have to detach material, so that is the, the, the reasoning. Anyways, one Giant Hunter, it's the evolution of Grinder Golem, uh, Giant Grinder, Jesus freaking Christ, uh, but the effect is actually worse uh, because it's once per turn, whereas this is up to twice per turn, so I don't really like this card too much, but it does destroy any card upon control, so it can be a... Um, uh, flex spot, I mean, a sp spot removal for, like, some spells and shop cards, even though it shouldn't really come up, because if you're up against floodgates, you probably just lose the game, honestly. If there are floodgates that actually hurt you, uh, skill drain, I don't think beats this deck, 
uh, because you can still play the game. You can still use the Enhanced Effect of Bloody Doll and then summon like 3k attack beaters. And every single time you just recycle back the Bloody Doll because it keeps falling off. And you do the exact same thing every single turn. It is kind of nasty. But yeah, anyways, double giant grinder, like I said. One Gigantis Doll is the rank 4. Uh, it can steal up to two monsters upon control. But then uh, until the end phase. Uh, but then you can't declare attacks for the rest of the turn except with Gimmick Public Monsters. And you, uh, sorry, with except with Xyz Monsters. And you also cannot special summon the monsters except gimmick puppet monsters, and then you can tribute it, and then make uh, all your monsters you control become level 8 this turn. So it's a nice card going second, it's a really good tool, but it also allows your bloody doll to reveal this, and then special summon the little soldiers. So you absolutely have to play at least one copy of Gigantis doll. And then finally, two camera doll, I think that's also a given. For the side deck, I think my side deck is very smart, very ingenious, so I am playing one of each of the Bistol monsters, as well as one Ghost Bell and one Joel and Logbird. The main reason why I'm playing these six different hand shafts is because they are the six hand shafts that might actually beat this combo in case your opponent has them post game one. So you want to have every single cross out target out there and uh, call by the grave as well. So you got 10 side deck cards going first and you're going to be siding out two Nibiru, two Ash, two Mourner, two Valor, two Imperm so that you have uh, 15, uh, you know, you've got, you're going to have what, six uh, plus uh, five, you're going to have 11 hand shafts as well as triple cross out call by the grave going first. And talent and double thrust. Yeah, good luck stopping me. Yeah, it, it's gonna it's gonna be real, real hard. But I didn't want to main that cross out because it, it just feels like a fake Yu-Gi-Oh card. It's only good when your combo always goes through. It's only really good in tier zero formats with like a lot of mirror matches and snake eyes, it makes sense because you don't just call hand shops, you also call snake eye ash and engine cards. Whereas in this, you're not really calling gimmick puppet cards unless you're facing like a gimmick puppet mirror match, but it's not interactive because it's gonna be like FTKs. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I would really side deck this card only when I'm going first. I think the Talents and Thrust are just much better to main deck because they're also good cards going second. Thrust can get you to your engine by searching, terraforming, or Condense Puppet. Or it can get you to Talent, and then Talent, obviously, it's always just a good card. So I think this is a much smarter approach uh, by maximizing the amount of cards that are just always good going second and also very good going first as well. This is uh, optimal, and then one dimensional barrier, it's either a card that I side in against Standby Dragon when it's gonna come out or Silent Forcer, or I side in going second with Cross Out, so I can call it because if uh, people start calling Xyz monsters, I'm gonna be in big trouble. This is the worst thing that can happen to you. And then finally for the uh, back row decks, I really respect them. So double lightning storm and duster, you can keep the thrust, you can surge them. As well as one dark ruler, the dark ruler can honestly be anything. I have no idea still. But yeah, that's it for my deck profile. I think, yet again, it is the best one that you can find on YouTube. At least at the moment, uh, I, I put a lot of work into it. So again, I would really appreciate you guys if you could smash the like and subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care, peace.